Model Making Guru is sponsored by eModels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. eModels.co.uk, make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, 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 welcome, welcome to part three. I can't do three fingers without putting my fourth finger out. Three, welcome to part three of our little build and paint series of the Medici, 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 already going well, isn't it? <laughs> right, of the Medifius Entertainment Fallout Wasteland Warfare uh, figures for the tabletop game, which is due out in May. Now, if you remember in the last program, uh, we did the little dual-wielding super mutant dude, and he came out looking pretty good. A beautiful figure. Uh, next up is the good boy of the pack. The goodest boy. The goodest boy there is. There isn't a better good boy than dog meat. Yes. Today we're doing dog meat. Aww. Now, I've never painted a dog before. I've actually painted an animal before. Uh, never painted a dog before. I've got some ideas how to paint him, so I'm going to see if these pan out. So let me go and get everything ready, and we'll see how this turns out. Back in a moment. Okay, so we are ready to go. Now, as before, as in the last video, I'm going to be using my wet palette, which you can't see on screen here, uh, which is basically just a sandwich tub, and I'm using the lid. Uh, if you want a reminder how to make and use a wet palette, I'll put the link up here. Uh, wet palette just means you can work with the paint for much longer than you would if you just used a dish or a plate or a tile or a palette pad or something like that. It keeps the paint moist. So we've got the paint there. First colour we're going to use is Ushabti Bone, my favourite paint name, Ushabti Bone. Uh, it's not the lightest colour we're going to use and unlike a lot of times when we paint sort of miniatures, we're not necessarily going to go from the darkest to the lightest. I'm kind of making this as I go along. In my brain it works, but we'll see how it comes out. So what we're going to do, get myself a little base brush. And the first thing we're going to do is just get the base coat on there. So this is a shabti bone. It's a layer paint. I'm just going to get some water on my brush. It is a layer paint. So it's going to be a little thin. So it might take a couple of coats. But this is the first one we're going to do. So we're just going to quite simply get the paint on dog meat to start with. As you can see, it is quite thin. Let's just get a bit more paint on there. It is quite thin. So it will take more than one coat to actually get this on. But we're just going to cover everything. Don't worry about getting paint on the base, by the way. As we did with the last model, I'll show bases in a separate uh, video. And the real trick with bases is you want to get the figure painted first so you don't have to worry about getting paint on the base and then paint the base last. Because otherwise you're painting the base and, you know, you're painting your figure and you're worrying about getting paint on the feet. All over, from the feet all over the base and things and just restricts what you can do to so do your figures first and do your bases later so I'll go ahead and get him covered and then we'll move on okay so that's the base coat of Ushabti Boom down uh, looking pretty bright not looking like a, a German Shepherd much yet but we'll get there hopefully I hope this works out Next up is a layer of Karak Stone. This is going to be a slightly more browny colour. So I'm going to get a little bit of water on my brush, tiny amount. And we're going to get a bit on the palette. I've already got some on my wet palette. And what we're going to do here is we're going to start to build up the dark patches. So we have dark patches on the haunches here. And we're going to be like brush stroker with this. We're not going to be too neat. We want to build up some little sort of stripes if we can. We're going to have some around the, the shoulders here and the saddle area. I know you don't put a saddle on a dog, but that's just, I can't think of what to call it. And again, we're going to build up some sort of brush strokes here, so it's not just a straight line. Uh, and it might not come out on camera particularly at the moment. Uh, let's have a look. I have some reference shots of dog meat. So he's dark on the back of his collar, on his neck here, and all along his back. And the dark patch continued all the way down his tail. So we're going to paint just the top of the tail there. And we'll do the same on the other side as well. And then also you've got the ears, a dark, the top of the head, and the muzzle. 
So we'll get all these parts painted up. And again, we're just going for a subtle cut here. We're not going for really solid lines, which is why we're not just going for, say, an Agrax Earth Shade wash or a black or anything straight away. We're going in slowly because we want to build these colours up. So I'll get all these bits painted and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so that's that colour on and it doesn't look too different here on camera, but it is different. I can see it myself, but it's only a subtle sort of difference. I didn't go on the insides of the legs or the belly underneath here because that's supposed to be a light colour anyway. Uh, so next up we're going to use uh, Talon Sand is our next colour. And we're going to do exactly the same as we've just done. But we're really going to focus on the insides of these areas, so more towards the centre, so sort of these sort of areas here. And this again is just to vary the colour up a little bit. So we're going to try and keep some raggedy edges just to make it look a little less like painted and more like fur. There's not a lot of detail in the fur on the chest and torso, uh, sadly. So it's not like we can just count on dry brushing for this. So we're going to have to use some brush strokes here. I'm going to try and use some brush strokes to suggest furitude. So we'll just again carry on building up these colours and we'll keep a kind of stripy brush stroke look if we can. Okay so that coat is done and it's looking a bit more uh, browny now. You can see I haven't got any smooth edges here, there's a quite a rough divide there. But the subsequent work is going to clear that. We're not too bothered if there's kind of harsh edges or jaggedy edges or anything like that. We're not looking for soft fades right now. It kind of looks like a coyote at the moment, but we're going to change that. Next up, we're going to go in with some of my favourite Agrax Earthshade. Some say that Duncan cries tears of Agrax Earthshade and that's how it's made. So I'm going to get some on my little palette. I'm not using my wet palette for this. I'm just using a bit of card because I'm not thinning this down and it's not going to last long. So what I'm going to do is get some of the Agrax Earth Shade on the brush and I'm just going to apply this all over him just to darken him down and start getting those lines coming out. Now I don't want the shade to pull up so I'm going to get it on there and then start moving it around just so that it covers everything but doesn't start to pull up say in that little join there between the leg and the torso. So it's just a case of covering him completely now. Okay, so it's starting to look a little more brown. We can see the details are starting to come out now with that wash, with that shade. So what's the next step? The next step is we need to start putting the darker areas of the of the fur on. So around the muzzle, the back of the ears, the neck, the, the sort of the saddle area there, the back, and the top of the tail. So what we're going to do for this, we're going to do something a bit different. I'm going to get my little card palette. I'm not again. I'm not using my wet palette for this because I don't need to keep the paint moist. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to cobble some things together. We're going to make a glaze uh, out of Agrax Earthshade. Agrax Earthshade, which is the wrong way around. Hello. There we go. And some Lamian Medium. Now, if you remember in the last video, we did something like this, uh, where we want to keep, we want to make a glaze, but we don't want to make the paint behave differently. So I'm going to get four scoops of the Lamian Medium. And I'm going to get one scoop after shaking it well of the Agrax Earthshade. Now the reason we don't want to change the way the paint behaves, what do I mean by this? I said it in the last video but I'll repeat it again. When you thin a paint with water, like an acrylic paint, it breaks down the acrylic binders in the paint and it behaves differently. So what we want to do is we want to be able to apply this paint so it has the same properties, it behaves the same way but thinner. So what we're doing, a Lamian Medium is basically a, a shade without colour in it. So we're just adding more of the actual binders and pigment, oh no, fluids, without adding more of the pigments. So what I'll do is I'll get the right brush because that's the wrong brush. I'm going to get some of the this new glaze or sh slightly thinner shade. And what we're going to do is we're going to work over the areas we want to be dark. So we're talking about the back here and the top of the tail. And then we're going to work it down the back here down over the chest and then we're going to go on 
and neck. Uh, I'm just looking at my reference pictures. It needs to kind of go up like that. So there. Uh, and we're also going to do the back of the ears and the back of the head here. And then, very carefully, we'll start to build up some dark shade on the muzzle here. Under the muzzle, the, the lower jaw is quite dark. And then you've got the tip of the muzzle, the snout. And then we've got around here again, so underneath. Uh, the forehead and the, the sort of the top of the nose is kind of kind of a light colour, so we're going to start a little bit of shade on there, but we're not going to put a lot of shade on there. So I shall do this now. At the moment we're just kind of following the areas that we painted the darker brown colour. But that shall get less and less as we go forward, because what we're going to do is we're going to do several coats of this. Now the haunches here aren't dark, they kind of the dark patch stays away from the haunch. So we're not going to really put any on there, we're just going to focus for the moment on the top of the haunches and the top of the tail. So I'm going to apply one coat of this and then let it dry. Okay, so that's pretty much dry now and you can see it's not made a massive difference, but that's the point. We want to build this up slowly and do some kind of like graded fade. So we're going to do exactly the same again. So we've got the same mix of the Agrax Earth Shade and the Lamian Medium. And we're going to do exactly the same again, but this time we're not going to go down as far. We're going to focus on more specifically what are the dark areas now. So we're not going to blend it down quite as far. So we're going to go down to about here, down to about there, around the neck. I'm looking at my reference photo. There's like the strap around the neck and the bottom of the neck here. So that kind of comes across like that. You've got the back of the ears. And then you've got the, the neck area here. And then on the other side, we have the same again. So we've got towards the ears and the bottom of the neck, so the chest area. Back of the ears, and the front of the ears as well, because they're dark. Then we have the very tip of the muzzle, and under the lower jaw. Do it on that side. And then we've got the saddle area again. But we're not going, as I say, we're not going quite as far down as we did last time. The idea is that what we're going to do is we're going to build up the dark patches with these shades and we're going to build up the shade in layers like this. And the idea is the more layer, as you add a layer onto another layer, it gets darker. Where's that going? That goes there. It gets darker. So the more layers of a shade I put on, the darker that area gets. And if you cover it, the whole thing in shade and add more and more layers it'll just generally get darker but if you start reducing the size of the layers that dark area will fade from the light to the dark and that's the idea we want to do now there are some areas that will be just dark so the, the top of the back here will just keep getting more and more paint on it and the top of the tail but as we get towards the chest we'll start pulling back how far down we go oh, where does that go so that goes to about there we'll start pulling down how we'll pulling back on how far we go with the paint so, I'm going to do this now. It might take me five or six layers, but I'm basically going to do the same each time, but just start reducing how much I'm actually painting, what area I'm covering. So I'll go and get all those done, and when we come back, I'll show you what that looks like. So, back in a moment. Okay, so that took about seven layers of the Agrax Earthshade, just built up around the saddle area and the tail and the tip of the tail and the head and the muzzle and the ears just to darken it down. You can see it's made a big difference now, but that's not as far as we want to go. We want to make it darker still, because if you look at an Alsatian, German Shepherd, depending on what you prefer. Uh, oh, I also did a little bit on the haunches here, but just like one or two coats, just to darken that a little bit, so it's not just all blonde color. So just to add, and this is this is why glazes are wonderful things, because glazes allow you to build up soft transitions of colors, just from one color to another. Uh, and the more layers you put on, the darker the, the, the colour gets. So one or two coats here gives you a sort of darker brown colour. 
but then six or seven coats over these areas built up just gives you that nice darker brown you've got a nice little fade there in the the, the gap between the the chest the belly and the haunch. I don't, know, I don't know dog terminology. I don't know what bits are called. I don't know paws and muzzle and tails and ears and things, but this bit here, it's, it's just, it's not a solid line. It's a bit of a soft fade. So you just get that difference. So we need to darken this even more. So we're going to do the same thing again, but with some different colors. This time we're going to go for some more Lamian medium. And we're going to use Norm Oil. So what we're going to do is exactly the same as before. We're going to knock all the paints over on my desk. Yes going to get ourselves some Norm Oil. One, two, three, four. Sorry, some Lamian Medium, I should say. And then we shall get our sin after giving the Norm Oil a good shake. If you're using Citadel shades, by the way, the matte ones, always make sure you shake them a lot. Because if you take something like Agrax Earthshade straight from the pot and you don't shake it, what you'll end up with is Agrax Earthshade Gloss. Shades are designed to be applied after thorough shaking. So you need to make sure you shake them really, really well. And what we're going to do? Well, this is going to be exactly the same as before. We're going to concentrate on these areas that need to be almost black. They're not quite black. And you could paint this on, but again, using a shade like this, like a glaze, means we can build these colours up. So we're going to start again. Back of the ears. Doo -doo -doo. Back of the neck. All the way down the spine across the top of the tail but at the tail I'm going to touch this bit here because I want this bit to be blonde it didn't quite come out on that but we'll, we'll recover that later and then on the saddle area chest and the ribs that's going to be a dark black color so again we're going to go in and start building up the color I hope this is coming out of camera because it's quite shadowy here and then round the neck and we're going to do exactly the same areas in exactly the same way but we're going to be a little more cautious we're not going to cover everything. We're going to leave more areas with that darker brown showing because we want the darker brown Agrax Earthshade color to be the transition, to be the fade. So we'll build this up, but we'll get more and more towards the spine away from the chest. We'll do a bit more on the muzzle, but on the muzzle, we'll again be a bit more selective and just really the nose and the tip of the muzzle, if I can get my brush there. And under the lower jaw. And again, this might take five or six coats, so I'll let you know when I've done it. But I'll go and do this several times. Back in a moment. Oops. And I'll drop it as well, because of course I will. Okay, and that's all the normal oil added. About three or four coats was fine. Uh, I've also gone ahead and painted in the teeth, and all I did for this was get my super fine triple O. Uh, Windsor and Newton Series 7 brush and just lightly touch it with some wash de bone to where the teeth are and because uh, it's such a small figure and the details aren't that crisp it kind of looks like he's got a cheesy grin rather than a snarly growl but that's fine I don't mind it's only just really supposed to be a hint at scales like this where it's such a tiny figure you don't need to worry too much about being super realistic and accurate it's just enough to see it on the tabletop when you're playing the game if you can pick the details out then that's fine this isn't you know you're not submitting this to a competition where they're going to look at it through a telescope so i wouldn't worry too much now i also went around the eye sockets with some uh, norm oil just to darken them i'm not going to paint the eyes in the eyes are there the little tiny sort of lumpy dots but i'm not going to try painting those in because dog meat's eyes are kind of brown anyway so there was actually a bit of agrax earth shade there first and then some normal so it just looks like a dark area which is what you'd expect to see on the dog's bonds just a dark area and when you see it from that kind of angle i don't know if it'll come out on camera and i do apologize that i can't really get much closer than this because this is such a small model it's really hard to film but when you see it from that kind of angle it looks about right you've got the dark sort of mask around the eyes which is what you want on your german shepherd or your alsatian or whatever you want to call them so what's left a few more little details to do now this isn't going to be a long video uh we need to bring out the highlights in the face so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to my uh, which colour is this? To my Karak Stone, I've got my Fired Windsor & Newton Double O brush. I'm going to get some water on the brush and I'm going to use it quite thin. I've got it on my wet palette. I'm going to use it quite thin. Get the excess off on my thumb. And what we're going to do is just try and pick out the brows if I can do this without stuffing it up because it's quite small and hard to get to. So we just want a little bit of a hint. Let's see if I can do this. 
It's quite fiddly this. Just a tiny touch of Carrack stone on the brow, just above the eye sockets. I've got it quite thin because as I've, as I've said in other videos, when you work with paint quite thin, not super thin but quite thin, it goes on and looks a bit harsh but when it dries it blends in quite nicely. So we just want a bit of a hint on the brow there. And I'll probably have to go back and double that up a little bit with a bit more. Oops, this is really hard for me to do, especially with the camera going. Uh, and I'll do the same around uh, the edges here. Uh, and then the last bit will just be a bit of dry brushing. So I'll go and do that. It's going to be easier for me to do it off camera, but I'm just basically touching it to the raised areas. So I'll go and do that back in a moment. Okay, so that's the head done. Uh, what I need to do now is one last bit, and I started doing it here on the leg, is going with the Carrack Stone again. Again, thin with a little bit more water than normal. And all I need to do here is work around the inside of the legs and the sort of the, the shins or paws, or wrist, or whatever you want to call that, and just start to lighten those up a little bit. So I've got a little bit of paint here on my tiny, tiny brush. And you won't be able to see this, but what we're going to do is basically just start to work inside the legs just to brighten those up a little bit again it's thin more than normal just looking at my reference picture it's thin more than normal just so I can start to build it up like we did with the glaze and I'm doing this in little brush strokes with the brush strokes going in the direction of the fur just to suggest furriness and this is going to be all around the inside of the legs we've got some to do on this this kind of joint here and on the inside of this leg and then as on the inside of the, the inside of the legs so I need to go around and build up that color and that's just a little bit on the inside of the belly near the crotch just to build up that color a little bit because we want them to be lighter on the inside again it's hard for me to film this because it's the inside of the legs so you're probably not going to see any of this but I wanted to show you anyway Okay, so that's been done, just as a little bit of lightness here and there. And there's one last step, and the last step we're going to do is to dry brush. We're going to dry brush with some Ushabti bone. We're going to go back to the Ushabti bone. And if you've not seen a dry brush before, it's very straightforward. All you do is you take yourself a piece of kitchen tissue, get some paint on a flat chisel edge brush like this. Just a little tiny amount of paint. Then you need to get most of it off on the tissue so there's very little left like that and all we're going to do with this is we're going to go over the real base of the pores this is the lightest color we've used we're just going to very gently go over the base of the pores just to try and brighten those up a little bit and this should leave some of the shade in the recesses where there is any left but it will also just brighten those up and give us a nice soft edge we can't really do this anywhere else because it's a bit of a shotgun approach, scattergun approach, and it'll just get a bit obvious on the rest. But on the paws and legs, oops, and if you throw the piece, that's really brilliant. On the paws and legs, we can fade that quite nicely. Okay, and with that now done and dried, dog meat is done. Puppy dog is painted yeah now i haven't painted the base like i said i'm going to do that in a separate episode and uh, bear in mind i am tailoring these videos towards people that haven't really painted minis before they're just keen to get the game get the pieces painted and get it on the table but they don't want to field uh pieces that aren't painted or just have a cut of primer and that's it because that's a sad thing these models they live to be painted and put on tables and played if you put them on and they're just primed or bare plastic or bare resin in this case, they just get sad. They get sad and unhappy. So you don't want them to be sad. Don't make your little miniatures sad. Get some paint on them. So I'm really telling this to people who'd never painted anything before. Just showing you a quick and easy way to get some paint on your miniatures so they look a bit more interesting. So it's not exactly museum quality. If you've got the, you know, the time and the patience and the skill, you could do more work on the fur to make it look more fur-like. You could paint in the eyes and the pink bits inside the ears and things like that but that's not really what I'm trying to show you I'm just trying to show you how to get a quick paint job done so you've got things to play with so there you go now this is my first ever animal uh, and I'm, I'm happy with it there are things I probably have to work on a bit more uh, if I need to paint more animals but I'm really happy with this how it's come out 
But now obviously the review part, because these are really reviews. Uh, what do I think of this? Well, I love it, it's great. It's tiny, um, but it's really adorable. There are some things that would make it even better. I think if there was more fur texture built into it, um, that would make the painting a lot more interesting. You could do a lot more with dry brushing. However, having said that, we are kind of spoiled by things like fur pelt cloaks on st storm wolves and space wolves and warhammer stuff where it's all really exaggerated and cartoony these are meant to be realistic so it's it's probably a bit too much to ask for a lot more fur texture on this there is fur texture sculpted into it you've got some around the collar and the neck and there is a little bit on the tail on the chest but as you can see on here once it's had a couple of you know very thin washes of glaze and things like that it does tend to just disappear and it becomes flat now it does look shiny from the null oil that will go away once it's been matte varnished i just need to give this a cut of matte varnish once the base is painted so a little bit more fur texture would be nice but i don't think it would work from a realism point of view so i can understand why they didn't do that that being said it still is a beautiful sculpt absolutely adorable sculpt there's lots of little detail on there it's really got some character to it i do think it would be 100% improved if it had a bandana and goggles. I have to say that, Modifius. Although, having said that, I hold my hand up and say I haven't checked through all the models on the on the site. There may be other models of dog meat available in different poses, and some of those may well include bandanas and goggles. I'm sure they probably do. Go and check them out. Uh, but if there aren't any, then hey guys, you need to make one with bandana and goggles because dog meat's not dog meat without his welding goggles and goofy grin. But yeah, other than that, I mean, they're just little things. But other than that, this is a beautiful little model. It is tiny. I mean, look at the size of it compared to my thumb. And bear in mind, when you do play this, you're going to see it from a long way away on the table like that. You're not going to see it in great detail. So again, I'm just trying to show you a quick and easy way to paint these things, get some paint on them so they're not just bare resin, which is sad. But that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, don't forget, of course, this game is due out in May, Fallout Wasteland Warfare pre-orders are up now you can get your pre-orders in whether you're interested in the game or you're just interested in the miniatures and you want to get them painted because they're really nice and they just like make nice display pieces uh, do go and check it out uh, Medifius themselves say it's best to pre-order if you're interested uh, because they'll fulfill all the pre-orders first and then start fulfilling all the orders that come in after launch date so if you want your stuff as quickly as possible get some pre-orders in now get them on the cards don't forget of course it's not just Nora and Dogmeat and a couple of super mutants there's loads of other figures there's Minutemen there's Brotherhood of Steel there's Wasteland Creatures I think there are some uh, ghouls in there I'm pretty sure there would be It'd be crazy if there weren't and uh, lots of scenery and set pieces and barrels and desks and things like that and computer terminals and all kinds of good stuff so do go and check them out they're beautifully sculpted beautifully molded uh, in all these figures I've got I found one tiny tiny little pit and that's on his chest where you can't see it anyway so no issues with the moulding at all with this so far. So do go along and check it, Medifius.com or Medifius.net. Get your pre-orders in. It just remains for me to thank once again the guys from Medifius for sending these beautiful little models to me uh, to review and get painted up. Stay tuned for the next one, uh, which will be Nora. Uh, and again, as I've said a few times now, for all of those on my channel who are watching and love me doing Gumpler, don't panic. Once these are done and once the e-models skitter is out of the way, I'm on to the Strike Rouge Uatori. That's the next Gumpler. So there is Gumpler coming back. And of course, uh, one of my followers did send me a Sinanju. So I've got to do that at some point as well. <laughs> so there's lots more Gumpler to come. Don't panic. Don't panic. I can't make Gumpler just forever and nothing else. I will make other things, but I'll never stop making Gumpler. I just might do other things. But yes, uh, it does remain to me to thank the viewers as well for watching this. Uh, don't forget, of course, to like and subscribe uh, to stay tuned with more stuff that I upload. I upload as much as possible. And don't forget, of course, thanks to YouTube and the way they work, don't forget to hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. Otherwise, you won't get notified when I post a video up because YouTube are made of pants. Thanks, YouTube. Yeah, so like, subscribe and click the bell. It seems to be the phrase uh, to see more. I will go away now and I'll finish this video. I will go and start working on Nora. Uh, but until next time, do go and check these out. Take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. And until next time, adios amoebas.